Hello world! Welcome back. I hope you're all doing okay out there. It's been, uh, literally months since I last made a video, but my stupid ass life really isn't important right now. We're here to dive into the Season 11 quest, Trouble in Paradise, and learn more about our long-awaited legend, Ashley Reed. There is an absolute ton that I could say and that I would like to say about this storyline all told, about everything else that I've missed. I've obviously been anticipating Ash for a while now. Ultimately, I'm very happy with how they've executed on her so far, and in this first chapter. But let's see how they've done it. Obviously very happy to see a return to the Broken Ghost format. Pure dialogue, I have some ideas about how they could adapt this even further that we'll discuss as we get into the first chapter, The Two Halves. It's quiet, aye. Dark. Computers flickering. Parts swaying after Newt's fine work. Bits and pieces of different arenas skit across the screens. There's a ringing in my ears. Maybe from the fight, and nearly dying on the claws of a nasty simulacrum. Or maybe it's from inside my head, telling me that what I'm hearing can it be possible? So, this is what Blisk meant about an old friend. I suppose it would have ruined his fun to be more direct. You! How can... How can you be here? You're supposed to be... Dead? Hmm. Strange you would speak to an old friend that way. I love all the various hmms that Ash gives us throughout this chapter. And I really like that we're picking up directly from the Prisoner's Comic miniseries and the Ash to Ashes cinematic. How dare you! You took my life! You took my son! Calm yourself, Doctor. You're becoming hysterical. <laughs> I love the dichotomy between these two. You! I'll show you hysterical, you foul tumpshi! You are familiar with exercising logic, working toward a goal. Maintaining your composure is the most effective way of seizing what you are after. This is a very strong insight into what makes Ash, Ash particularly, who she is. We'll come back to that as it gets expanded upon through this chapter now. What I'm after is my boy. What? You know what happened to him, is that it? That's what you said. Ah. <sighs> but I've learned better than to trust a word that falls out of that lion mouth of yours. Hmm. She will be distressed to hear that, I'm sure. What? She? What are you on about? You truly didn't notice? Those codes you used unsealed a significant amount of data. My past. The knowledge that I am a simulacrum. That I am unconstrained by the limits of human physiology. I was preoccupied, absorbing it. The other one was able to rise to the surface and speak with you, briefly. I would have expected you to discern her by her sniveling voice. Wait, wait, what are you... You're away with the fairies! No, she's not. This again. The idea of becoming a simulacrum, something that Ashley Reed accepted and chose to do while still alive, and went through the process of while still alive, to become unconstrained by the limits of human physiology, that is something that she did, personally inspired by Mary, the quote of, without stepping into the unknown, without risk, there is no discovery. That aim to become more is again a big part of what the Ash element of Ashley Reed focused in on to allow her to be who she was. Again, we'll see more of that as we go a bit from here. You're away with the fairies. I can see how you might find this situation overwhelming. I will put it simply. I love that self-assuredness as well. That's what so many people seem to love about Ash. And again, is a big part of what makes her the character that she is. We will come back to why that's important. Hmm. Dr. Ashley Reed was a weakling. She allowed herself to be destroyed by those who should have fallen to her. Her missteps led to her demise. I was a small piece of her, then. But I have grown. 
I have become more than she could have ever hoped to be. This is my personal favorite interpretation of the Ashley Reed Ash dilemma. There's so many ways that people have taken what it is, multiple personalities, a fracture of the original personality during the transfer. That's something that was confirmed through her bio, as far as I remember. But the Ash personality, a lot of people keep coming back to this line from the Ashes to Ash cinematic when Ashley Reed says that she always did what she had to and she remembers throwing her rising into the black hole. Ash makes the point, you think that was you? And a lot of people took that to mean that she already had some sort of a fractured personality or multiple personalities. To me, Ash was always a mask. A small piece of Ashley Reed that Ashley Reed wore to be able to do the things that she wanted to do. Mm. To surpass those who should have fallen to her. To be more, to progress. That is a huge core of what Ash is because of who Ashley Reed is. Ash is so self-assured because that's a core element of why the Ash personality exists. Why the mask was worn. But when you eventually separate those two, you end up giving this self-assured personality that aims only for progress and sees it as the sole cause for existing. That's why you end up with a character like this. She's formed from the wants and needs of Ashley Reed at the time. And the Dr. Ashley Reed, the weakling that she refers to, is the reasoning behind it all the human connection and desire that led to the creation of Ash. The reason that, to me, Ashley Reed split into Ash and what the story sometimes refers to as Lee, sometimes refers to as Ashley, the human consciousness that now resides in the back of Ash's mind, the reason that those two, I think, did separate during the simulacrum transfer process is not just because Ashley Reed was still alive when she did it, which says a lot about her herself, again, how determined she was at the core of it, where this Ash personality came from. The reason that Ashley Reed did split into these two personalities is because she already existed as these two people. The way I see it is the way I'd always seen Diva and her relationship to Hannah Song. Diva was a set of bunny whiskers that Hannah Song painted on her face to be able to do the things that Diva can do, that only Diva can do. Again, Ash and Ashley Reed, I think, are in the exact same situation here. That was an interpretation I had come to, and I'm glad to see them, to me, confirming it here. Being a small piece of who Ashley Reed was, and having to be forced to the surface because of the trauma of transferring into a simulacrum when you're still alive, dying, as it were. Yeah, it makes sense for the mind to be able to cope, to use this more self-assured, confident, determinate character within Ashley Reed's mind to be able to allow her to cope. To me, Ash is about certainty, and Ashley Reed is more about curiosity, discovery. Ash is the risk that Ashley Reed took to learn more. The other one is what's left of Reed's many weaknesses. But she is immaterial. She is already subdued. Soon she will decay into nothing. <laughs> Does that answer your questions? Oh aye. That clears up a few things. You're out of your bloody mind. Or you take me for a bigger fool than I could have thought. Your faith is unimportant to me. You may believe my explanation. If it satisfies you. It does. Thank you, Ash. Satisfies me? You took everything. My home is gone forever. My son grew up without a mother. Because of you. You think anything you say will satisfy me? Go, Mary, go. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Ash, for the hmm. You always were overly sentimental for a scientist. But I assure you, it was not personal. That's a kicker. Because, oh man, there is so much personal between these two. What? 
Dr. Reed had no vendetta against you. Yeah, she fangirled over you hard, Mary. Throwing you into a black hole was a difficult decision that she needed Ash to be able to do. And even Ash, I had no such vendetta against you. You were merely one obstacle among many. A casualty of the mission. Like, Newton? Was he an obstacle? Hmm. You and the other one. You were both so captivated by him. Curious. I found him quite dull. Though I suppose it makes sense for you. He was made in your image. You were there. The day of the explosion. You would have seen him. And Ashley Reed off-screened him. She let him go. We all know that by now. I hope we're all down with that with that theory that has been around since Pathfinder's Quest, that Ashley Reed let Newton go. The suggestion that there was so much more to her, there was a compassionate side of Ashley Reed, has been there for way longer than I think people think. And I think people forget that it's also a part of Ash, too. Look back to Red Flags and Legacy Lost in the Legacy Antigen to see what I mean. And for just how she treats Horizon now. I really enjoy that both Ash and Ashley do kind of fangirl over Mary Summers, pretty deservedly. You really do know something, don't you? Do I? I was under the impression that you didn't trust me. Delicious, thank you, Ash. <laughs> I've had enough of your sick games to last ten lifetimes. Tell me what happened to my boy. You are in no position to make demands of me. Now, I'll be taking my leave. I expect you to find the exit on your own. I love how cold she is, man. It's delicious. You think you can take everything from me and then walk away? Kudos to the voice actresses on both their parts throughout this chapter. I really like how they've used audio here. Except for this bit here. This space feels like it could be used for so much more. Even if you just repeat the character pro portraits that we've had, or whether you use this for a full image to make it a bit more like a visual novel, that would be very interesting. I get that there isn't anything here because we want the sound, that, <laughs> that lovely screen to lead us in, and that is that ash slicing through dimensions, is that just meant to be a dramatic sting? Because it sounded like Horizon also like cocks a gun and is going to go for Ash. This here, to me, it feels like it's missing something to accentuate the action that's actually happening. Like I say, a full image by one of the community artists would be absolutely fantastic to fit here. But I think you've also got an opportunity to change narrative style and turn this into prose, not dialogue, like, written from, like, a narrator's point of view, like, an introspective moment of Horizon dashing at Ash to try and attack her, and Ash stepping through dimensions behind her, sword in Horizon's back. And then, I suggest you avoid making any rash decisions, Dr. Summers, which would be a bit more poignant with a knife in her back right now, right? We have both been alive for decades. But only one of us has walked through death to get here. And only one of us broke the fundamental laws of the bloody universe to get what she wanted. How much more poignant would that bit be if Ash had already stepped through dimensions in front of her to prove that not even this is worth a lot? Oh, and have you gotten what you wanted? God, that line, the MVP line of this chapter. Oh my fucking days. And have you gotten what you wanted? Shit, man. You're a monster. And it ain't because you're a machine. If I'd known that was you in there, I would have smashed you to bits before I woke you up. And yet, here we are. It seems you cannot help but be useful. Again, dramatic sting, 
what's that meant to be here? This here, those two sounds really need a bit more context to expand on what the story they're trying to tell. I like the idea. There's more that I think that can be done with this. I hope that this is like a visual bug or something like that. I expect our friend Lillian would have been impressed with your ingenuity. Were she alive to see it. Next time, the one who walked away. To me, these two final bits of audio do work on their own because they give us enough context, pretty just inherently. The first one is Ash walking away. And the final one is Horizon crying. Makes a lot of sense. Yow, what a way to end out a chapter. For Ash to just fully demean Horizon's entire goal from this entire time. It wasn't even a personal deal. She was just a step in the road. If anything, she was a big step in the road to take. And that must hurt. Having someone you're supposed to hate turn around and point out that that couldn't be further from the truth. Reflexively. Damn what a chapter. Damn what a way they've brought Ash into the game. Uh, I love her overall concept. Two iterations of a character trapped inside one body. It raises a lot of questions and ideas for Revenant as well. I do like what seems to be the presentation is that Revenant does not have this same dilemma going on, but it does allow us to infer other ideas about how he's come to be the way he is. That's personally very, very interesting definitely lends a bit if you want to work it towards the Caleb Cross is actually Bob Woods theory especially if we're thinking of how a mind will allow itself to cope with the trauma of becoming a simulacrum although Ashley Reed and Ash both seem way more accepting of that than Caleb Cross or Bob Woods or Revenant ever would have been or ever can be now I like that we're getting positive simulacrum representation. Uh, I really fucking enjoy that shit. And I like how it's both going against the ship of Theseus and backing it up in one go to create this really awesome dilemma within Ash herself that also then plays out into Horizon as well. Like, yes, awesome chapter. These bits here, this to me is a really good opportunity again to do prose rather than images. Earlier the sounds weren't clear enough to suggest what they were being used for, that I think images would have been the best choice. Here, again, the sounds are inherently clear enough for you to know what's going on. So to me, this would have fit to have something like, as you get Ash walking away, uh, something from Horizon's perspective along the lines of, all I could do was let the echoes of her footsteps fade away. as I have done everything else. See? I think that there's an opportunity with these blank pages and the sound to go along with them. The sound helps us realize that there is like a change in style in a way, that at least filling this here with something will make it feel a bit less jarring to read. First time I read these, I didn't n know why they were here. I thought something was missing. Again, I hope this is a visual bug. To me, there's a really awesome opportunity to uh, expand on how this story is being told in this format if you are to use these blank pages uh, just a little more interestingly. The focus on sound is good. Again, either be clearer with your sound <laughs> or, yeah, use it in a new way to expand. Uh, I would love to see the community artist's approach to do concept art for these gaps, even in retrospect. Do you know what I mean? That would be sick. Or if you want to reach out to fan writers to fill in these blanks for you from like a different removed like narrator style, have at it. <laughs> if you like my ideas there, please use them. And if you can, hey writers, if you can, I'm not going to push you to do that kind of work. 
if you have the time and effort to be able to invest that idea in to any of these gaps you have in future chapters, please do so. I think it'd be really worth it. Um, not that it needs a lot of help, because Trouble in Paradise is off to a great start. I'm really glad to be back. I'm really glad to see them executing on their story so well. I'm, uh, if they needed the season off to really get this in place, yeah, that's absolutely worth it. Sia stands on his own by being so mysterious that his development, I think, can come at a later time. He works sort of how Horizon did when she first came in, that her concept was so strong that we didn't need her to be the focus of that season's comic. Rampart having sort of a less inherently interesting concept, just in general, really benefited from getting to show off her dynamic personality through the season six comic. But yeah, if you're going to introduce Ash, especially with the, the setup that you've given us, yeah, uh, I'm very glad that her and Horizon are the focus of this season, and I'm looking forward to seeing this expanded upon. Ash regaining old memories that draw her to an important piece of her past. Will that have anything to do with the Remnant fleet, the motivation that she had while she was working for Vincent Dynamics? The Ashes to Ash cinematic suggests that after her defeat at the hands of Jack Cooper, Ash may have been able to suppress Ashley Reed a bit more, or the memories that were Ashley Reed got taken by the Remnant fleet, or... Yeah, this is the bit here that I'm waiting to see properly expanded upon. What of Ash's old memories are the thing that is driving her to be the person that she has become, despite the awakening of her original self in the back of her mind. Uh, I, I'd fucking love that concept. There's a, a book by the science fiction writer Ian M. Banks called Fearsome Engine, where a character makes an AI copy of themselves um, that then lives inside their own cyber brain, and they're actually initially very cooperative. That, to me, feels like a way that Ash's storyline could ultimately go Ash, as she said in Ashes to Ash, she wishes to cast off the yoke that is Ashley Reed. She will be rid of her. That initial aim of separation does make me think that Ash's overall arc is going to lead into her, several seasons down the line, actually bonding with Ashley Reed. Like, uh, separation becomes unification. The, the two of them will become this one singular whole being. Eventually. Once we actually understand more about why she is so driven, like literally as driven as to, you know, surpass death itself willingly, etc. You know, I love again how Horizon is a big influence into why she did that and how she was able to do that. Yeah, uh, Ash is fantastically interesting to me. Well done to the writers for how you've executed on her. I'm very glad to also see the confirmation of this element here. That, yeah, Horizon finds a clue to her son's fate. Ashley Reed let Newton go. He lived on. If you ask me, the very opening page of Pathfinder's Quest suggests that somebody who initially made Pathfinder reawakened him in 2700 after finding him wrecked from the phase explosion. Although he has memories from like 2690 of a baby, that to me, has always been a suggestion that Newton reawakened Pathfinder the first time, but also willingly at Pathfinder's behest got rid of his initial traumatic memories of the phase explosion. That's definitely something that I think Trouble in Paradise is going to build us out into. Really happy to see the Broken Ghost format return. I have obviously my recommendations if they want to change up how they execute on that. There's another two weeks before the next chapter. Keep an eye out on Twitter. You never know what they'll do. What will they do to get it? I'm looking forward to see. I hope you've enjoyed the Trouble in Paradise initial chapter, the two halves. I hope that you're enjoying Season 11 and Ash. And I hope you enjoyed my thoughts today. I'm sorry to have been away for so long. A lot of real life stuff got in the way. There's so much I could say again about all the stuff I've missed. Legacy Antigen ended really well. Sia, just, yeah, gorgeous. Um, broken, but, you know, gorgeous. Really glad they got the visual direction that they did behind Sia. Absolutely fantastic. I'm glad they took the time off. The Prisoner's Comic miniseries that 
led us into. Ashes to Ash was fantastic. Old Ways New Dawn was a really cool introspective exploration of faith and grief. Kudos to all the community artists who've gotten to do stuff that I haven't commented on. All of your stuff was so much more gorgeous than any of the uh, industry products that came out. If you catch my drift, uh, congratulations to everyone who's gotten to work on getting us to Season 11. But with that, that is enough from me for today. And it's already been a very long video, as per usual. I'm very glad to return in my usual form. Hopefully I am actually back to making content permanently now. I will be keeping up with Trouble in Paradise. I'll be trying to catch up on all the comic readings that I haven't released yet. But that will obviously take some time. Thank you for staying with me today, friends. I really hope you enjoyed yourselves again. Go out, enjoy Ash, enjoy Stormpoint, enjoy Season 11. I've been Euclidean Vision, the emotional support. Take care of yourselves out there, legends. And may the glorious light of Beskill shine within you. Bye-bye.